Welcome to What's Up Kansas City. And today our very special guest is Reverend Michael Brooks. Good morning, man. Good oh place. man, it's good nice to, to be you. here this morning. You yeah, know, I, I feel so good being here this morning because this is a very historical uh, a landmark in our community. No doubt about it. Too. And uh, I can remember being director of minority contractors of Kansas City, Missouri, and Reverend A. L. Johnson was one of my great supporters. Oh, On every cause we had, he would stand up with us right. without any problem, and he he was very faithful and dedicated. Yeah to the upbringing and the uplifting of, uh, of minority contracts no in Kansas right. City. So you're, so you're right. riding in a, on a big bicycle no, no and with big shoes. No, no doubt about it. Well, no welcome, doubt. Reverend. Thanks, Thanks why, for why don't you uh, kind of tell us about, give us an idea about who is Reverend Brooks? I am. Well, I was born and raised in Kansas City, uh, went to Central High School, graduated in 1980. and. Um, Stayed here for a couple of years, and didn't know what I wanted to do with my life as far as school is concerned. And so, um, about 1982, I actually went into the Air Force. Okay. So, I left here in 82 and stayed gone um, in the Air Force for 10 years, but didn't move back here until 1998. So, I was gone for about 16 years in the military, worked for the military after getting out uh, from active duty. Uh, then also went into ministry while I was in the military as well. So I started that in about 1982, 1983, mm -hmm. and uh, moved to Texas, did 10 years in Texas, and actually stayed there and started pastoring a church there. Mm -hmm. So I pastored a church in Altus, Oklahoma for about four years before I moved back to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, came back here, spoke community builders, hired me as a substance abuse counselor. That was my trade in the Air Force. And uh, started working there and uh, spoke with the homeless services uh, department and uh, got involved with the homeless population here in Kansas City, so that kind of fit right in with the ministry as well. Uh, and then in 2000, I was able to call here to be pastors. So oh, that's a kind of sharp, <laughs> <It's not> sharp, <laughs> sharp, sharp verse. Uh, yeah, that's a sharp version. A whole lot of other stuff in between there, but that's kind of suggested what got me here. Well, let me ask you this you're a family man. Yeah, no doubt. I have a married, have four children, have uh, three sons and one daughter, uh, three grown children. Uh, all in their 20s, and I have a seven year old that's uh, going to school, and he's in second grade, Michael II. So uh, he's, uh, he's a little, uh, little mini me, really. Uh, okay. But he was a miracle. We weren't expecting to have any more children, and he came along, and uh, he's uh, been a blessing. He keeps me young. I can't get old now because he, <laughs> he keeps me good, pretty busy. Uh, so yeah, we are been here, going to be here uh, now that I'm here at the church and at city council, uh, doing that for about a year now. And that's worked out pretty well uh, as well. I kind of got uh, a feel for what's going on in the city hall now. And so I think we can get some stuff done. Looking forward to, you know, what we can do in urban core and try to improve some things around here. Uh, I told Phil Curls one time, late, the late great Phil Curls, when he was talking about Louie, I said, yeah, Phil, that was your late night party child. <laughs> late night party child, but yeah. it's a beautiful thing. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, to have bring somebody into the world and, and to be have the experience that you have now mm -hmm. to, to share with your, with no your doubt. siblings. And it, I it think makes that's a difference. Yeah, yeah it, it makes, makes a big difference. difference. My 25-year-old uh, just moved back here about a year ago as well, so he's staying with me now. And okay. he's uh, got into the ministry, so he's preaching. Uh, I go back to school, got a job with uh, Jackie County Courts. She's working in a halfway house for them, uh, doing what he does. He wants to go into psychology and work with children. That's and uh, so it's, it's just been uh, really, man, life hasn't been this good in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell it in your eyes. <laughs> I'm very confident about it. The road to success is always under construction. No doubt about it. And this is certainly not an end all be all. We still got some things we need to get done. Right. I'm not I'm not resting on what we've achieved. That's that's a mistake. Right. Uh, but there's still a lot not a lot yet to be done. And uh, so we're gonna do the best we can to be a part of what's going on here in Kansas City. Well, you know, just doing your best is all you can do. That's it. When that's you lay it. down at the end of the day, memories and the best. Yeah. The very best. No doubt. That's all we have to look forward to. Now let me ask you this, um, um, uh, how long have you been the pastor here? Uh, this is 12 years this month, matter of fact. I came here uh, 12 years ago in July. <laughs> so we just celebrated 12 years, first of this month. Mm -hmm. Did you know Reverend A.L. Johnson? I didn't know him personally. Actually, we it's, it's a crazy dynamic, man. Like I said, I know y'all don't have time for the whole story. But no, uh, we, 
I was in. That's why I was like, you are. Like, serious, I was actually stationed in Anchorage, Alaska, my second duty station in the Air Force. And uh, that's where I decided to get back into the church and join the church called New World Baptist Church in Anchorage, Alaska. At the time, their pastors just passed away, so they were in between pastors and had a lot of interims. Uh, and so we went through the whole pastor search thing as soon as I got back into church. And we ended up calling uh, our Carl Johnson, who was Ailes Johnson's son. That's right. That's right. Uh, he, had, he was at Park Avenue. He left Park Avenue to actually come make his last and pass to that church up there. So, I think I remember that. Yeah, so him being from Kansas City, we kind of hit it off. And so when I kind of talked to him about the ministry and what I felt God was calling me to do, he, he uh, just helped me tremendously. And so uh, that's how kind of I got to know Al. He uh, came up and did a couple of church anniversaries for us. But, my whole time growing up, I never knew who he was. But, uh, so it's just kind of ironic. I had to go all the way to Anchorage, Alaska, meeting. And then here we are, you know, 20 years later. Um, sitting right here. Yeah, I'm sitting in the church and pastoring the very church that uh, let me pastor for years. And so I think God's got a sense of humor sometimes. I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And not knowing exactly uh, how life's going to turn out. You just never want to burn any bridges, man. Always want to do the best you can with people you hang out with because you never know when they may be somebody you need later on down the road. Uh, but he has an awesome track record, and I don't think anybody can. Uh, well, he was a character. No, no doubt about it. And he was serious. He, was, serious. he said what he meant. He meant what he said. Yeah. So in some respect, we were kind of saying when it comes to that. Uh, I'm not trying to fill his shoes, but there's a lot of characteristics that he had, I think, that we, we, uh, we shared. Uh, because I think if you're just being open and honest with people, they respect that. Even if you disagree, at least you'll know what's really on my mind and what I feel. That's that's just kind of how I try to live my life. Yeah, you know, life is full of many surprises and mysteries. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, no if, you, if you stay here long enough, oh, yeah. all that becomes true. The road yeah. to success is always under construction. Oh, life yeah. is full of many surprises and mysteries. It's just, it yeah. just unfolds like yeah. that. Yeah, and this whole situation, man, because Zane Grove had, uh, from their, from their uh, information to me, had over 2,500 applicants to be pastor of Zane Grove. They didn't know me from Adam, and uh, really they had some probably very more uh, educated, much more educated, much more experienced uh, pastors that mm -hmm. were actually um, applying for the job. But this, you know, it's just where I believe God wanted me to be. Uh, there were a couple other churches in the city also that didn't have pastors that wanted me to put an application there, but when I finally felt this is where God really wanted me to be at. That interest in other churches just wasn't there anymore. Tell us something about you serving on the city council. Well, um, I can tell you how I got started with the political pieces, really uh, not this term, but two terms ago when Cindy Circle was running at 5th District at large. Uh, I don't know how many people remember, but Kamiko Gilman was actually uh, running against her. I remember that. And uh, Claire McCaskill had hired Kamiko to come and work on her campaign, so she dropped out of the race. And uh, so Pastor Eric Williams and some other individuals approached me uh, because they just didn't feel like Cindy needed to run on polls and we're trying to put somebody else in that race. Mm -hmm. uh, so they spoke to me and I agreed after talking to a couple of people that I respect, uh, Pastor Cleaver, uh, Pastor Williams, you know, Pastor Hartsfield, and uh, all of them said they thought it was a good idea. Had no intentions of, of uh, didn't know if I could win or not, but it just uh, didn't make sense that anybody should run on the polls. Um, so it wasn't anything personal against Cindy, it was just a matter of putting somebody else in the race that we could believe in. And uh, so that's how I got started in politics. Actually, one primary, which was surprising to me and everybody. I remember. Uh, but but uh, she got an infusion of money in the general election. I couldn't pay, and uh, she actually won the election. So that was kind of my first kind of feel. And to, to have that kind of success the first time out really kind of showed me that I really had the time that I needed to, to put into a race I probably could win. Uh, so we knew Terry Riley's seat was coming up, he was going to be terminated it out, and so uh, we began having conversations around that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how they ended up there. Uh, decided to run for his seat, and uh, uh, one of the closest races ever in the city, Kansas City politics, uh, but uh, I won the seat by about 35 votes. Right, right. Yeah. But what do you like about city council? Uh, I don't like it. It's uh, it's cool. <laughs> it's uh, it puts me in a position to uh, know more about what's going on in the city than, than I would have, uh, and then also gives me the opportunity to to influence some decisions that are being made. Uh, I think I'll bring to the table a different perspective just because of where I'm coming from. 
uh, being a community activist, not only that, being a pastor and being involved with people's lives on a daily basis, I do kind of know uh, where people are hurting and what the problems are a little differently than some other people on the council. And so uh, I think I bring something unique just like everybody else does. And so what I really like about it really is the diversity. We really have a real diverse council. Uh, the only diversity we don't have that I kind of uh, don't like is there's no Hispanic representation. But as it as relates to men and women, old, young, black, white, uh, we have a very diverse council. And I think we get along pretty good. Mm -hmm. What's some of your projects that you would? Right now, uh, in the what's what's high on my list of priorities is uh, redeveloping that Citadel project up on 63rd Prospect, uh, also the Banished area. Those are two the two big ones that I think we just have to do something about. Uh, that blight has just got to be dealt with, and so we do. You know, there's some conversations going on uh, with the Banished area. Can't really talk about it right now, but hopefully the conversations will go well. And we'll get something going on out there uh, with the Citadel. Uh, because of all the asbestos and vaping that needs to be done, the cleanup is still taking place right now. So once we get it cleaned up, we can start having some real conversations about what's going to go on there as well. Um, just personally, I just have, you know, education has been my big thing as well. That's why we have the charter school here at the church, uh, for high school dropouts. Uh, but we're finding out there's a number of young people that don't, don't have any place to stay in the school time. So uh, I've taken on this initiative to try to address the homeless youth pro uh, problem in Kansas City. And again, just starting to have some conversations with some people that have that expertise and seeing what we may be able to do mm -hmm. uh, to do something about these kids that are just on the streets with no place to go. What about the uh, inclusion of minority business in, uh, in your tenure as a city council? What's your, what's, what's your thoughts on that? Well, that's, that's always an issue that comes up whenever there are major projects, uh, and not just me, I think there are enough people on the council that, that will ask that question, but uh, that, that is a question that's constantly asked. When it comes to big projects, the companies coming in doing business with the city, you know, what are what are your goals, uh, and not just what what are the goals, but what are you going to do to make sure that you meet those goals. Uh, before going on the council, I actually was on the our workforce development board to make sure the contractors uh, did what they said they were going to do. Uh, I still think there's some teeth that needs to be added to that uh, because I don't think there's been a whole lot of punitive damage uh, against companies that haven't done the right thing. And so this year, I believe it's time to uh, reauthorize that whole, relook at that ordinance and uh, try to reuse it. So we're going to uh, be having some conversations now about how to uh, add some more teeth to that to make sure companies know we're serious about uh, what happens when you don't get the numbers. Uh, but when you say you're going to do something, uh, get it done. Uh, Dunn did an excellent job with the NSA project. Uh, and, and what they did, actually, I told them when they came to testify against to us, about all the good things they did. And I said, well, what you've done is proven to us that you can't do it uh, if you put the effort in. And so uh, my conversation then was, I hope other developers hear and see what you have done, because if you did it, that means we do have the capacity, we do have people in the city that can get the work done. And so uh, we're hope hoping that will continue. Uh, but Dunn did a pretty good job there, and so I believe now what we've been told, that there's not enough people, there's not enough workers, we don't have the capacity, it's just not true, because they proved that. Well, I have my opinions about that. Uh, I think that we need to reshape uh, the programs that we have. Probably we need to start by firing Philip Young, uh -huh. Human Relations Department. Uh, that we could start there, uh, fire him and send him on down the road. Mm -hmm. but, but meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, they say they say in Proverbs four twenty three, it talks about a man's heart. And so give me some thoughts about your heart, your heart and your passion about your community, sure. your church. Proverbs well, 423, you're a clergyman, so mm -hmm. you don't really know about that. Well, the, the, the passion, again, uh, is just one. I think everybody deserves to be treated equally. Uh, that anybody that's not being served, anybody's not being treated fairly, anybody's not getting a fair shake, regardless of where they came from, where they, where they were born what kind of family background they have, everybody, I think, no, number one, shall the right to a quality education. Because uh, I, I think that becomes a driver. Without the education, all other stuff really is irrelevant. Uh, because without the education, you can't get a good job. Uh, which is why, again, that's kind of been my focus. That's why we got a school here, and that's why I've tried my best to work with the school district, and I'm still going to work with them. Uh, I got some, you know, issues with some of the things they've done. 
but I think we still need to find an alternative. I think as a community, we have failed our children by not coming up with a viable alternative. Uh, whether it's charter schools, whether it's private schools, I, and, I, and I tell the church community, perhaps I'll be good all the time, I say it's a, it is a shame that through all these years, we don't have one African-American Christian school. Uh, Salem has a pretty good early program, but we don't have a K through 12 Christian school in the African American community at all. I think that's an indictment um, against church because I don't think it's because we can't do it. It's just because we haven't decided uh, to put the effort in to make it happen. Uh, I think Bishop Tober has done an excellent job trying to get what he's going doing over there. Uh, but as a whole, I just think we could have done a better job uh, keeping tabs on this education issue before it got out of hand the way it is now. You know, uh, um, um, education is the pathway to life. You know, and uh, a lot of folks don't, don't realize. I used to tell my kids uh, when, I, when, I, when I was fathering my kids, I used to ride to school. I used to ask them to point out the north, south, east, and west. And then I used to tell them, I said, if you don't go to school, you'll grow up to be a mule. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And so education yeah. is a pathway to, to life. Now, also, I was reading this morning in Proverbs 29, 19, mm -hmm. and it talks about vision, mm -hmm. where where you don't have any vision, the, the people, people what, perish. Yeah. The people perish. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true. Well, that's Why don't right. you give me a little bit of conversation about the vision uh -huh. and about us perishing? Because you just said, you just said, that it's, seen, it's an indictment on us that we do not have a Christian education mm -hmm. from what? K-12, really. K-12, and I, and I believe that. No, no, no. I believe we should have, I can see it right now, we yeah. should have a place right now where kids are mm -hmm. coming in proper and fitted, fitted mm -hmm. and with some order, yeah. and, and with, with a nice trademark behind it. And it's, and it's I, I, I totally believe it's possible. I, I think now there's people really having some serious conversation about that. And again, I, I hate that we always have to react to negativity before we try to do something positive. I think it's just the right thing to do. But if it took the negative to get us to wake up, so be it. Um, I, I think we all know the challenges that's going on with our school district. I, I don't think that's a secret to anybody in Kansas City. Uh, good, better, and different, it is what it is. But I still think we need to come up with small terms. Yeah. The, uh, um, uh, when you talk about no vision and the people perish, mm -hmm. I also think there's an indictment on, the, on our community where we do not have a full blown technical school. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at that icebox right there, I'm looking mm -hmm. at that refrigerator. Mm -hmm. At some point in time, that refrigerator is going to have to be repaired, it's going to have to be serviced. Exactly. And if, you don't, if you're not providing any proper training mm -hmm. for our kids, that's a very lucrative, uh, yeah. no lucrative uh, occupation. Well, that's one of the things. The other thing that I'm actually uh, working with some individuals on right now is, is revising the whole vocational training uh, deal. They're gonna, we're looking at trying to uh, start some, uh, some classes, hopefully by the fall of next year. Uh, we're, we're working, uh, there's a couple of different groups, and I don't want to name them because I'm not sure who's just really bought in. We're just having some conversations about it now. But a lot of kids are not going to go to college. Uh, and that's just the reality of it. But that still doesn't mean they don't have, they shouldn't have access to a quality job and training. That's part uh, of the plan. Yeah. So if we don't, if we don't have technical people that can do the mechanical skills and do that type of work, uh, again, we're going to be using that. Uh, and the work and the money is going to go to other people. So it just makes sense that we need to create uh, some technical schools. Uh, with Google coming in here and uh, all the information technology jobs are going to be available. They're saying right now, before anything else even starts, they don't have enough individuals to fill IT jobs in Kansas City right now. We already uh, know that. Yeah, so if we're not pushing kids that want to do it, not just everybody, but the kids that really want to do it, we're not pushing them into that field. And they can do that without going to a four-year school. There's some technical schools, again, they can go to, get certified, and be ready to take some of these jobs that are, that are available right now. Uh, so that's the key, I think, educating the children on, again, the different possibilities and different alternatives that are out there. Uh, it's not just going to college. That may not be what's going to fit everybody. Uh, but if we don't tell them what the alternatives are, again, it's our fault because we have to give them the knowledge, like you said. So where there's no vision, where there's no knowledge, where there's, uh, there's no hope, 
you know, people perish and just kind of make their own decisions and do their own thing. I believe that's why we have a lot of confusion in our neighborhoods now mm -hmm. because our kids don't have a choice of no self-destruction no and, and a trade, a, a technical skill that they can get. Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of cities, even like St. Louis, they do a good job of technical <laughs> training. Uh, you know, you can go learn how to do something. Right. So you can get right. paid. And and it wasn't always that way. I mean, when we were growing up, there were that all the schools had technical schools. You can do auto mechanic, you had wood shop, you had metal shop, right. yeah. I mean there were and and for, and I know what happened, you know, the money got cut and they just cut the programs. Uh, but now is an opportunity uh, to revisit some of those things. And I think we do have some individuals that are already in the trades right. that are willing to create this school if we can find the space. Uh, and find opportunity for them. So we're looking for a space right now. We're looking for a building uh, where we can house it and then talk to some of these uh, professionals to see who's willing to come. And, and you know, uh, uh, I spent one year trying to deal with this issue about technical trade. Uh, myself, Sam Dowdy, and Anthony Arnold, we spent one year uh, working on that and we almost got somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, 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 we ultimately filed a complaint against the city. We're the ones who filed the Section 3 complaint. Okay. That's the only okay. why they got Section 3 now. Okay. Because we filed, we filed A lot of people talk about doing it. We right, did right. it okay. under the Bush administration. Okay. And uh, so we got some things turned around. But 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 we couldn't get it complete because we didn't have the support. I got you. I mean, people labeled us as bad, bad guys yeah. because we saw something wrong. Right. You know, right. we saw our kids walking around. It wasn't for us because yeah. we saw too yeah. many people not working. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, I'm glad that you, you're moving in that area because that's something that's very dear to my heart. I recruited at Florida a and and North Carolina a and for six years so, okay. for construction. Okay. Okay. And what I found out, uh, Reverend, was that that technical skills training was good for college kids too. Because most of the college kids in the construction science department, that's what gave them a leg up in the program. Okay. Okay. And then I've looked at the architectural students as well. They mm -hmm. had taken like carpentry right. and yeah. uh, uh, auto mechanics mm -hmm. and stuff, which gave them a better skill set yeah, yeah, yeah. in uh, going to college. And I think that's that's the key too. Uh, uh, a multiple skill set is really where these kids need to be turned in. Uh, Not just get pigeonholed into one field, uh, but you really need to have some diversity because you'll find that even these kids with college degrees are getting out and can't find jobs. Well. I, you know, you know, going down to Florida and North Carolina, it showed me that it works because a lot of these kids had technical mm -hmm. certificates behind them right. in, in the construction right. science right. and architectural school. Uh, the mindset in Kansas City, I, when we, in our process of trying, we, we met at the Botech on Children Road, we, we met with some guy down there for, for a year, mm -hmm. and one of the older persons there, they retired now, told us that at some point uh, the school system started um, uh, pushing going to college. Mm -hmm. And yeah. going to college and then yeah. they kind they of left. That, they yeah. took it away from that, which mm -hmm. that was that was, that was it. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think it just became a financial thing. They just didn't want to keep putting the money into it. Right. Um, and and uh, with nobody there to fight for it, I think it was just just made it easy for them to just stretch the whole program. Right. But I remember that every school, I remember Central High School, we had a auto mechanic shop I and every year. Central. Every year they get a car and the, the class had to work on the car, get it going, the passing grade was at the end of the school, at the end of the school, the car needed to be running. Right. <laughs> and it, it was drivable and, uh, and it worked. And, uh, now again, that even that trade is a little more technical, you need more, more computer skills, oh. uh, that type of thing. But it's still something that's a viable, uh, good paying job if that's what you want to go into. Oh, no, no doubt. A uh, lady was telling me uh, recently that she got one of these hybrid cars mm -hmm. and she, the light right. was 200 <laughs> in, to 200, almost yeah. $300. Yeah. And there know. was a special tool and a technician that had Yeah, you can't give it yourself. I mean, uh, they had, had, mm -hmm. had to change it. No, you can't, no more shade tree mechanics. No, you no. gotta know what you're doing. No. But here's what I do know is that once we get in, mm -hmm. once we start learning, then the shade tree comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, once know, you get somebody with skills. Skill, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that's that's where that whole entrepreneurial spirit always comes from. We'll, we'll give me the information, give me the skills, 
don't pigeonhole me into your industry and your company and what you want me to do. Uh, give me the skills and give me the choice whether or not I want to work for you or I want to do my own thing. And uh, that whole entrepreneur thing is just what has made our community and kept our community going the way it's been going. Well, you know, so, and, and, uh, and uh, um, I found out over the years that, uh, that our uh, uh, business owners came from the skill set. Oh, yeah. No, they, they didn't just come out of yeah, nowhere. No. They came from no. doing something for a while and yeah. they say, hey, this is. And, and most entrepreneurs, that's kind of how it works out. They, they end up working for a company for so many years, but then realize, you know, I can do this on my own. Right. And, uh, and, and have the faith and confidence to launch out and start their own thing. Uh, you'll see a number of businesses, that's how it got started. It wasn't that somebody just gave them something, but they went and did it the right way, got the education, got the skills, and then came and started their own. You know, I was sitting here laughing and just thinking about this, uh, that uh, I grew up in War Chapel AME, Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was a brick mason and could plumb and mm -hmm. could electrical, and then my yeah. uncle was a plumber. But I was, uh, you know, a lot of these churches ran by oh, the, no, the no, members no. who had that skill no, set. No, no, no. no, no, no they the same thing. You didn't, see, you didn't see none of these 80 made trucks driving yeah. in on these parking lots. My yeah. dad worked a full time job, 35 years. Never, and that's, that's my hero. I can talk a little bit about that. 35 years on the job, never called in sick, never missed a day. Okay. Uh, only time he wasn't there when he took his week vacation every two years. Uh, right. But when he came home, he was fixing people's TVs, refrigerators, he was uh, doing construction work, and so uh, he always had something going on inside. That's right. Uh, but he had seven kids. He had, right. he had to support his family, so he was doing whatever he needed to do uh, to make things right for us. But I remember having somebody else's TV in our living room just about. <laughs> every other month, right, and, right. Uh, we watch it until we got it fixed. Right, and we watch it for a while, and that's why you know got it fixed. We watch it for about a month. <laughs> that's why you know it was right. But uh, he could rewire somebody's house. He could do construct, added a room onto the back of our house all by himself, laid the foundation. Uh, I mean, when he needed new brakes, he didn't take the car nowhere. He pulled it in the backyard, took the wheels off. Now my re regret is. I didn't follow him, right, right. and uh, you know, working with my hands wasn't my thing. So, I, right. I, although I applauded what he was doing, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, but I regret that now because if I had that skill set now, there's some things I could do differently as well. Right. Uh, but that's that's my hero, man. He right. he showed me uh, how to be responsible, how to take care of your family, and how to do whatever it takes to make sure your family is taken care of. Does your dad still live? Yeah, still alive, still alive. How is your dad? He is 82 now. 82? Yeah, 82. Well, it was uh, Earth, 79 or 80. I get the years mixed up. It's been so long. They were, uh, I'm 51 and he was 31 when he had me. So, yeah, he's 82. And my mom is probably 79. So, and they're still going strong. He's still doing little odd jobs. Not as much as he used to. But somebody calls me today to do some work. I call him to do work on my house sometimes because right. he can still do it. Um, is he a member here at the church? No, he grew up in Canyon Baptist Church. He's still a member of Canyon Worship Center out there with Tony Collins. And uh, and I understood that. He'd been they've been members there for forty something years and right. so although I was pastoring, uh, that's where they were rooted and grounded and they needed to stay where they want to stay. They, right. they do come visit on a regular basis whenever you have something special going on. Mm -hmm. uh, they're my biggest supporters even to this day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh do what do you got planned for Zion Grove? Expand or we don't need to expand. We need to we need to do some major remodeling uh, to the building. Uh, a lot of what you see is the original stuff that was here when it was built back in the 50s, and uh, we're we're paying the price for that now because it's old pipes and old heat and old cooling system, and uh, we're going to have to revamp the whole place. It's probably going to take a couple million dollars just to do a whole face of the inside and out. Um, so it's going to take us a few years to get that done. We're just going to do it. Piece by piece, a little, little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. I think our next focus is going to be sanctuary, and try to get that fixed up. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually, we're going to have to go from floor to floor. If you get a chance to go upstairs to see the school, you'll see what they were able to do. And we're going to duplicate what they did. They spent almost uh, seven fifty thousand dollars renovating that whole area. Uh, so the color scheme and what they've been able to do upstairs, we're going to duplicate on the other levels just for continuity. Uh, but it may, like I said, it may take us a while to get it done. But I. Have no intention of moving, going anywhere. They've been here this long, uh, and so we're going to keep on. We're going to keep on doing what we've been doing. You know what? In, uh, we we get ready to wrap this up, 
And, and I want to wrap this up with, uh, I'll ask you about Proverbs 4.23 and then Proverbs 29.19. Okay. So I want you to give, give our audience uh, uh, your vision on and your thoughts on 4.23 about your heart and then 29.9. Uh, uh, okay. Um, well, the, the, the scripture really comes to mind is, uh, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, so it starts with, with your thought process. I think Paul puts it this way. Uh, if you're going to change, you got to change by conforming your mind and not thinking like everybody else. Uh, the saying is, think outside the box. I'm, I'm trying to change that saying and just say we need to get out the box and think totally different. Uh, dream as big as we can and believe we got a God that's big enough to make it happen. Uh, that's, and so whatever the vision may be, it really does need to be bigger than I have the ability to complete it. Because uh, if I can do it, then God really doesn't have to be in it. So I really do need to make some plans that I can't succeed on my own and plans that can't be done even in my lifetime. That when I leave, I want to leave something for somebody else to complete. Uh, in that, God will continue to complete it. And that's what the scripture says. He's the begun a good work in you. He's going to complete it until the end. Uh, so the vision is, is, is something that has to be shared with people. And if people get excited about the direction that you're going in, uh, that's how even they stay alive. So the people stop perishing. And that perish really does mean people stop doing whatever they want to do. They really do need some direction. As much as people fight it, you know, as much as kids argue against it, they really do want discipline and rules and regulations to follow uh, because then they got to go a guideline and a role and a, and a roadmap for life. Uh, and that life with God comes with rules and regulations. He said, if you love me, you're going to do what I ask you to do. And so a lot of people say they love God, but I'm not sure uh, that love is in action. And that's what I think we need to do at church, is, is put the love we talk about uh, in action. If I really do love God, I need to show it by loving people as well. Mm -hmm. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great interview. I really enjoyed this today, uh, uh, Pastor Love Brooks, Love being at this historical landmark and by the mere fact that I knew A.L. AL Johnson, right. he knew my father, both okay. of them. Those soldiers are gone. Yeah. They're, they're, they're fighting yeah. somewhere else. And uh, it's been just a real blessing to be here today. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, What's Up Kansas City, uh, a byproduct of Cascade Sports. And what we're asking you today is to support what's up Kansas City .net and go on the site and take a look at us. And then also, and I'm, I'm throwing this out to you too, Pastor Brook, we're, we want to do interviews with mothers and daughters and fathers and sons. We want to talk about some of the highlights and some of the, the positives, some of the energy that thrives in our community, and it's with the families. And we know that we got good fathers and sons out there, and we know we got good mothers and daughters, and we know we got good grandmothers who are, 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 five, are, are, are taking care of, of young people. Mm -hmm. And so we want to highlight that too. We don't want to be a, a, a media source that is one of criticism, but we want to be a one of a solution. Mm -hmm. And we believe the foundation of the solutions are our families. That's mothers and daughters and fathers and sons. So we're asking you to support it. And also we're looking for folks who want to advertise on What's Up Kansas City because there's a thin line between dreams and reality, I was telling a friend of mine, and you never know. Uh, What's Up Kansas City could be prime time one day, but it will only be prime time if we have the vision. We have the vision to move on and move forward. So What's Up Kansas City? I remember this when I was a young man growing up in War Chapel AME. Uh, Mrs. War was my Cub Scout leader, and I learned this, this this very important saying, and I'm sharing it out to people today. To look sharp is to be sharp. And what's up, Kansas City? And thank you very much.